boy. Now we've got to install an SSH server. Wait, no we don't. SSH is installed by default on OpenBSD operating systems. It's the SSHD that's the server and SSH that th that's the client. In OpenBSD we don't run daemons, which is what long-running applications are called. We don't run daemons just by hand like savages. We have a more civilized way to do it that makes it so that we can run them by default every time we boot up with the proper permissions and in a way that makes it so that we don't really have to worry about security because a good solid third of it is already covered by making sure that it's executed with the right permissions by the right users and in the right order. <coughs> The utility that we use to manage stuff is called RCCTL. It is a is a utility much like system CTL. And like system CTL, system CTL is for system D, and RCCTL is for uh, I think it's RCD. Eh. Anyway, uh, it doesn't really matter. There are a couple of commands that are all the same as R as uh, systemd commands, except that there are less of them, and they're only the ones that you're going to use. It doesn't manage targets and other stupid stuff that it shouldn't. It's for managing demons, and that's it. The demons are all located in uh, rc.d. In Etsy, there's a script called RC, which runs all the other demons. And there's also an rc.d directory. There's an rc.conf file, which we're not going to touch ever. And an rc.conf.local file, which keeps all of our local per machine configuration. rc.conf is just a template. Less is a utility that allows you to view files and like scroll up and down and all this fancy stuff. Right here in rc.conf.local, it says sshd underscore flags equals no. That makes me think that sshd isn't going to run. There are also the defaults, which are in rc.conf, which make it sound like almost nothing's going to work to run, except for, I don't know, what check quotas, whatever that is, uh, package scripts, what are those, uh, I'm gonna tell you later, um, first things first, in the last tutorial I put hostname.em0 in the wrong location, mistakes happen, Uh, that should have gone in slash Etsy, but it didn't. Also, it wouldn't have made any difference because the configuration I made does exactly the defaults. It's very important that you check your mistakes. Uh, all of the scripts that are run by RC are in rc.d. Oh, look at all of them. Oh, there's sshd. Well, that makes it clear and simple. We can just run sshd with rc and it'll be easy.
What do you mean easy? I gotta learn a whole new thing, say my viewers. Okay, I'll learn it to you real quick and simple. The command that you use to interface is RCCPL. It is, there is RCCPL start, which allows you to uh, start up different demons. There's stop, which ends them. Enable makes them start every time you boot up. Disable makes them not start up every time you boot up. Get will give you information about it. And ls will give you uh, different demons of different sorts. If you don't want to go around scrounging through rc.d, you can use rccpl.ls. Uh, let's go and figure out what's going on with sshd so that we can just make sure it doesn't work good before we start messing with it. Okay. sshd underscore flags equals no. That's the important part here. Every program with an underscore flags next to it, that is uh, part of the SSH, D, sorry, no, uh, RC configuration, which tells your program how to run. If there is nothing after the equal sign, then it will run with no arguments. Remember, arguments are like uh, cat da the dash n and cat dash n. If you put the argument after the equals, it will tell it to run with that argument. Just as if you put it uh, after the space when running the command plane. And it will do that with as many arguments as you want. If you put no instead, in all caps like it is here, it won't run at all. So we just want to change it from no to nothing. Maybe a space, just nothing. But let's not get too eager. Let's make sure that it works at all first before we make it work every time we boot up. That's just uh too difficult to do right on the first time. So let's uh let's just go test it, start it up now. Okay, let's really start it up. Ah, we need dash F. Okay, that's fine. Oh, it, it wants us to put dash F in front of start. I'm Again, I'm not editing out my mistakes because I want to show you how real Linux and OpenBSD, Unix in general, system administration actually works. So, let's go and... Uh, let's list out our devices to show uh, where our internet is connected. All right, we know that ping doesn't work, so let's just see if we can do SSH to uh, our address. Okay, our network address doesn't work, and that's probably just because we're running in a virtual machine as opposed to running it as a real machine. So uh, that kind of ruins our day. We won't be able to connect to this virtual machine by SSH unless we do some fancy configuration with the virtual machine. And that's not what this video series is about. So let's just go and uh, connect it to connect to it with our oops. Let's just go and connect to it with our own machine that we're currently running. Localhost is an alias to 127.0.0.1. .0 .0 
alias means every time you type this, it means that. Every time you type localhost, it means 127.0.0.1. 127.0.0.1 always refers to the current machine. All right, so let's go and connect to lo to our own machine. It'll always ask you if you want to connect. That just m means, are you sure? If you are, it will trust that machine forever and ever. If you aren't, then uh, it won't connect to it. This is not because it doesn't think you're sure. It's because if you accidentally type it the second or third time, you'll know because there's this big message. So that'll help you keep your wits about you. Then it'll ask you for the password. You wouldn't want people to be able to connect your machine if they didn't have a password, unless you do. If you do, use Telnet instead of SSH. Telnet is completely unencrypted, you can optionally make it so that people don't have passwords, and it's really old, and you almost never want it. Alright, let's log in. I don't know. Cool. Did, did that work? Oh. No, it didn't. And I logged out as well. Okay, let's see if we can SSH into it from our user user instead of our root. Ha! Huh, cool, it worked. That's nice. It looks like we can't log into root. Uh, let's just test that. The way that you connect to a specific user on the machine, instead of the user you're currently running as, or the username you're currently running as, is you put the username at the name of the server. Now let's log into root just to make sure that we can't do it. And then... Oh, so we just can't. All right. Uh, you can either type exit to exit or you can do control D. Both of them do the same thing. I prefer control D because it's faster and it works for a bro broader range of applications. So now that we know that we have SSH working, let's, let's go and make it work every time we reboot the computer. Enable makes the daemon turn on every time the computer is started. Let's make sure that we did it right. I don't do this every time, but... Ooh, boy! There it is. There's no no. It's nothing instead. Perfect. And uh, let's go and check out uh, Etsy RC... Uh, conf.local. Wait, there isn't one. Okay. Hmm. Well done. Alright. I just deleted it for us. That's pretty convenient. Alright, great. We did it.